In 1980, the artist Anna Mendieta stood in a dirt field in Amana, Iowa. She bent down and cleared the space of irony. She, she carved the shape of a goddess into the earth with her hands. She hollowed out the goddess and filled her with gunpowder. She set the powder on fire and watched it explode. Then she took photographs of this now burned girl and called her Untitled. In 1985, Ana Mendieta fell from a window during an argument with the minimalist sculptor Carl Andre, her large and jealous husband. She landed on the roof of a delicatessen. Her body made a print on the metal. Mass and attraction worked like ammunition. Carl Andre was acquitted of her murder, and so it was understood that Ana Mendieta died of gravity. Women worry, though. Maybe Ana Mendieta actually died of homicide. Maybe the system is rigged. And if Ana Mendieta could get killed by her man but not be legally murdered, then what about them? Women who love art and fret about things like sexism look back at the burned girl that Mendieta made. They watch the burned girl rise from her Iowa grave. The worried women see her walk into 1985 and into 2016 and into the future, writing graffiti on the walls of art galleries. Ana Mendieta was killed by a conspiracy, the graffiti reads. What do you do? Ana Mendieta's work is in vogue for the very first time. It was always too earnest before, but now with the imprint of her body on the delicatessen plus the decorous passage of the years, it is just right. Today, we may purchase silver gelatin prints of her burned girl for over $40,000. In 2015, though, Sotheby's, the auction house, estimated that Carl Andre's sleekly minimal copper squares could fetch over, any guesses, $3 million. But we don't have that kind of money. We could host a BYOB fundraiser in the park, though, and buy the art from the dealers who will hopefully give us a discount. Then we could hold the Guggenheim hostage using our rolled up copies of art form and our rejection texts as weapons. We'd put all of the pictures and the copper squares into the rotunda and demand a retrial. The retrial would not observe due process, however. It would obey instead the laws of aesthetics, which demand beauty. And which is beautiful? Maximalism or minimalism? The burned girl will laugh to see the city set on fire. On the other hand, her elegant enemies, the copper squares, will erase all of your doubts with their spare surfaces. But one is guilty and must be executed like academic painting and Clement Greenberg. But this is more important than mid-century modernism. This is about a woman of color, motherfucker. We will put dark veils over our heads and pray that the jury thinks that $40,000 is expensive. We will spray fake blood like PETA activists and demand that the laws of beauty be obeyed. We do not pretend to be objective. Ana Mendieta is collectible now, but we want vengeance. After minimalism is convicted, there must be a sacrifice of the art world. There will be a catalog raisonné filled with autopsy reports and auction prices. Once there are no more museums, we will give ourselves a day to mourn before we move on to Congress. We'll buy for ourselves and Micheline Thomas first. We will not use the word purge. We'll use the term nowness and employ the burn girl as our brand. But we must fend for ourselves if we are to embark upon this revolution. Feminist art critic Linda Nochlin is on the admissions committee this semester and the Gorilla Girls, they're at Bilbao. It is left for us to sing and to dance until we find the savage solution. <laughs>